Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday mountain weather update, and it is snowing and blowing up here. Look at the solitude, man. Look at those winds. 50, 60 mile an hour gusts at times. Uh, reporting over in Little Cottonwood Canyon about 10 to 12 inches in the last 24 hours. I believe it's around 8 to 10 here in Big Cottonwood. But you could still pick up another 8 to 10 uh, today. So you're not done. It, it, the snow will continue to fly up there today. So a big day today. It's probably ski patrol cruising through. Uh, tomorrow will be another big day after the storm is over. But man, look at that. That is some good stuff. All right, let me take you up to Little Cottonwood. This is Alta reporting 10 to 12 inches of new snow, and it is still coming down heavy uh, there. You've still got 8 to 10 to go. Um, now, the other side of the coin here in Colorado, we're just waiting on it. Um, all the snow's over Utah and Wyoming right now. Eventually, though, the whole thing will rotate into Colorado this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow with wind and snow. Um, let me take you up to Jackson Hole. So they're reporting 10 inches of new snow in the last 24 hours. And so it should be a great day up there. And you'll still pick up some light to moderate additional accumulations this morning. Um, and that'll probably do it. But then there's a really nice flow for the Tetons down the road with heavy accumulation. So things look good down the road for the Tetons. Here's radar across the west. Notice where the snow is. It's over Wyoming. It's over Montana. It's over the, uh, the Wasatch. Uh, Utah's just starting to rotate into western Colorado. Here's the uh, radar out of Salt Lake. And you're still socked in with wind and snow for several more hours up there. So looking really good. All right, here's the uh, the water vapor satellite imagery across the west. Low levels. So oranges and reds are going to be your drier air. The whites and the blues are your moist air. And there's our storm system right there. So eventually that'll move through Colorado, sort of that Colorado-Wyoming border, and emerge out here into the plains on uh, later today, tonight, tomorrow, with a lot of wind. And it'll turn into a big dust storm again for parts of Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico. And then there's going to be a little line of severe weather out ahead of it. And then there's going to be a blizzard potentially on the colder northwest side of it once it emerges out of there. So it's going to have a lot going on, lots of different elements going with it. Uh, another big storm system behind it, another one behind that. But I'll tell you what's going to happen is once this storm moves out, the whole flow is going to shift. Let me just use the green. The entire flow is going to shift and really favor the Pacific Northwest, B.C., central to northern Idaho, and northwest Montana. That's going to be your longer term area of favorability up there. And then across a lot of the lower 48, we're going to get a big high pressure ridge that builds in. And there's going to be about a five day period where it's just going to be warm and dry looking down the road. All right, here are my bullet points this morning. So snow through 323, then the rich flow shifts up to the Pacific Northwest and BC, like I was showing you, and then a giant ridge of high pressure moves in for 323 to 328. Snow timeline, best odds of snow, Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So in the Wasatch, you've got moderate to heavy snow continuing today. And then your next shot is moderate late 321 into 22. In the Tetons, light to moderate this morning, moderate to heavy 20, and then heavy 21, 22, 23. So great flow down the road. Um, Colorado, your snow will be coming in a little bit later today into tomorrow morning, moderate to heavy accumulations, and then light after that. And let me just mention the interior BC flow. It's light right now, but man, it's going to go heavy. 320 through 322, and again, 323 through 324. And we're talking significant accumulations. Forecast mediagram, this is Alta, Utah, effective about 9,000 feet. So again, your snow continues all morning long, uh, potentially another 8 to 10 inches of accumulation. Wind gusts 50 to 60 miles an hour out of the west-northwest. <clears throat> so getting nailed up there. Air temps are much colder today in the teens. Um, singles overnight tomorrow, about 19 for the high. On um, Thursday, looking at about 23 for the high. But tomorrow looks much calmer. Winds settle down to pretty much dead calm, and the sun should come out tomorrow. Okay, jet stream forecast. Let's look at things down the road here with this. All right, so I'll start it today, and you've got your dip in the jet stream. These are winds up at about 30,000 feet, the steering winds in the atmosphere. You got your dip in the jet. That's our current storm system nailing Utah, Wyoming. That eventually will slide through Colorado. Put this into motion. 
So by tonight, tomorrow, that low is already out in the heartland and generating a lot of weather, moving out of Colorado, moving out of Wyoming. Now behind it, you can see the next storm system kind of approaching the west, the next dip in the jet. All right, here's Thursday. Um, and you kind of a west-northwest flow on the jet out of the Pacific Northwest. That'll keep some weather going through a lot of the inner mountain. Um, here we are on Friday. And there's Saturday, another little kink in the flow for the inner mountain. Then it's high pressure. Look at that high pressure ridge across a lot of the west. The arcing to the north of the jet gives it away, bottles up the cold air. You're left with warm, dry air across a lot of the, uh, the lower 48. And that continues all the way through Wednesday of next week. Probably Thursday. All right, here's the forecast accumulation over time. So on this forecast, your light blues are under 3 inches. Greens are 3 to 6, yellow 6 plus, and reds 10 plus. And so there it is. This is early today. Heavy snow accumulation, Wyoming, Utah, and building into Colorado. And there it is in earnest. It kind of skips over Denver and I-25. The storm track's too far to the north, and the wind direction's just not correct. Um, we get a bit of a northwest flow out of the um, northwest wind across Denver, and that's a drier wind for, for the Denver metro. Um, but some, some snow for the eastern plains of Colorado, along with very high wind gusts, and then you can see the snow developing across a lot of South Dakota and Nebraska. The Black Hills are going to get some accumulation. This is early Wednesday, March 19th. Look at that ribbon of heavy snow. That's going to be the potential blizzard area across Nebraska. Omaha's in for a wild ride on Wednesday. I, I mean, look at that. That's early on Wednesday, March 19th. Omaha will go from early highs in the 60s to a rapid drop in temperatures. Um, into the 20s and 30s by the end of the day with rain over to snow and hurricane force winds. It's going to be intense. And then that low moves up towards Chicago and away. Now across the west, here comes our next storm system. This is early Thursday, March 20th into the Pacific Northwest. Brushes a lot of the, uh, the inner mountain. There's early Friday, March 21st. Look at all the precipitation up there in the Pacific Northwest and B.C. through this period. Um, some good stuff for central and northern Idaho, northwest Montana. This is early Saturday, March 22nd. Another storm system kind of diving through the inner mountain. All right, here's early Monday, March 24th. Potentially some, some precipitation rolling up into the northeast. And then high pressure ridging, guys. Here it is. There is absolutely nothing across most of the inner mountain. Uh, that's a long, dry stretch. All right, my forecast numbers look like this. So all of today through the 23rd, you could still pick up another 8 to 14 inches across uh, the Wasatch. 16 to 18 up there for the Tetons. In Colorado, the biggest numbers are in the central to northern mountains, anywhere from 6 to 12 inches of accumulation. Southern mountains a little bit less, potentially 4 to 10. Less in northern New Mexico. In the Sierra, I really don't have much. Two to eight inches of accumulation from uh, basically Mammoth through Tahoe up to Shasta. Uh, the Pacific Northwest numbers are big, anywhere from two to four feet. Uh, with the, Once that rich flow establishes itself, we're going to crank out some big snow. And interior BC, I raised those numbers, increased them 16 to 20 through Fernie, Red Mountain, Kicking Horse, and Revelstoke. Eight to 10 through Banff, Sunshine, up towards Marmot Basin. And look at central and northern Idaho. Uh, close to two feet of accumulation, about a foot in northwest Montana. All right, up in the northeast, not a lot happening. There is some light to moderate accumulations between late 20 and 21, and then maybe another storm around the 24th, but that's outside of this forecast. And even that's, that, that precip late 2021 could mix with rain, as it looks like right now. So two to six inches of accumulation, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. All right, guys, we'll end on the big western map here. And again, still some great snow yet to go um, through the 23rd, and then it's all high-pressure ridging uh, unless you're up in the Pacific Northwest or B.C. with that rich flow. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.